Hey guys and welcome back to another Unmentioned 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create an interaction prompt or text which comes on screen. I'm not quite sure what to call this or how to describe it, so if I go in and hit play to show you, that's the best way of showing you what we're making. So we'll go up to an object like this and then when we press E to pick it up, it's going to come up with this text on screen. Obviously that there was just a load of random letters to show that it will all fit on the screen however we want, and that was just a test. If I pick this one up as well, it will say this is a cube for example. So again, when we pick something up, it is going to just come up on screen with some text. So you see this quite often in story games when you interact with something, pick something up, it will give a brief explanation of the object or maybe some story lore or anything along those lines. So this is what we're setting up today. So again, I'm not quite sure what to call this, but this was a request. And so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set up the widget in which this text will be appearing on. So that's very simple. What we can do is we can right click in the content browser, go to user interface and create a widget blueprint. And I'm just going to name this interaction prompt widget like so, opening it up straight away. And then what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to add something called a size box. I'm going to drag that in here like so onto the canvas panel and what the size box will do is that will mean the text will always be in a certain area on screen so it won't go across the whole screen or come off screen or anything like that it will stay perfectly where we want it to be and adjust the size accordingly as well so we can have something really short or something really long and it will still all fit perfectly so I'm then going to move this size box to be where I want it on screen like so so I'm thinking about this size in about this position will do me nicely uh, so I think that's going to be good for me so I'm just going to even this up a bit. So size X, the width, I'll have a 630. And size Y, the height, I'll have as 155. And then I'll just center this up a little bit more again. And then change the anchor to be where it is as well so it doesn't move about on screen. So I think that position and that size on screen is going to do good for me. If I select it again, what we also need to do is change the width and height override. So I'm going to change the width override to be what my width is, which for me is 630 so that's the size X for what you have and then I'm not going to change the height override I'm going to change the minimum desired height and the minimum desired height for me I'm going to have as 155 so what that means is that if the text needs to be bigger it will be bigger than that if it needs to it will make it taller or longer but it just means that by minimum it will be this size so set that up to be how you like and then what we're going to do is we're just going to simply add some text in here so we can drag some text onto the size box and now we have that in there like so. If we select the text, you can change what it is and all that good stuff. So you can change its color, its font, its size, anything you want. All I'm going to do is make it so it's centered and centered in the justification there as well. So it's all in the middle like so. And then we're going to take auto wrap text because that is what's going to make sure that it does fit the size box perfectly is we have to wrap it. So again, wrapping just means it will follow this perfectly how we want it to. And the wrap text at is where it's going to do it at. So if we leave it at zero, what it's going to do is just completely render it as it normally would, so the full size of it. And then a frame later, it's going to correct it to what it should be. So what we want to do is if we change the wrap text at to be the maximum length we want it to be, it will do it automatically without having to render it first because it knows where it needs to change it from. So at zero, it doesn't know where it should wrap it at, but if we input telling it where to wrap it at, then that will work perfectly for us. So it's just a nice simple way of making it look a bit better because otherwise you will have one frame where the whole thing flashes on screen. So to figure out where it should be, what we can do is select our size box again and look at the width override. For me, that's 630. For the text, we can put it as 630 as well, but I'm gonna put it as 620 just to make it a little bit better so it doesn't go all the way up and then maybe mess something up and just in case we have a long word I might even put it down to 600. So again just customize that to get it perfect for the size which you want and you have but for me these are the values which are going to work. Now one final thing we need to do in here is we obviously want to create a binding for this text so we can change it. So I'm going to hit the binding on the text there and then create binding and very simply all I'm going to do is right click the return value promote it to a variable naming this interaction text or interaction prompt or anything like that and then that's all we need to do we can compile save and close this because we're just going to change this variable here dependent on what we wanted to say so we can close that like so and now we're going to open up our interactable object 
So for me, I just have a Blueprint Actor of Interactable Item BP. So you can right click, go to Blueprint Class and get an Actor. And the reason I've already got this set up is because I just have the basic interaction code in here already. So all I've done is in the viewport, I've added a cube and a box collision. And the event graph, I've got begin and end overlap with enable and disable input on there as well for that box collision. And I've got this set up just so I don't have to go over it too much. Uh, but if you don't know how to do this, I do have different videos on creating a simple interaction like this. And I've also got another video on creating blueprint interfaces, which are a lot more efficient, which you may want to use instead. But once you've got something along these lines set up, what we're going to do is create the widget. So off of enable input or the begin overlap, we're going to create a widget like so with the class being our interaction prompt widget we just made. And out of the return value, what we can do is we can set interaction text like that, connecting that in there. So now we just need to figure out what we want to set this text to. So we can right click on the return value again, promote it to a variable, and I'm once again just going to name this interaction text, keeping it nice and simple like so. And then we can tick instance editable and expose on spawn, compile and save that. And now what we'll be able to do is when we place down this object in the world, we can change this interaction text variable to be different for each instance of this blueprint. So we can use the same blueprint and have each one say something different, which is going to work perfectly. And then after this, what we want to do is we want to right click and get a gate. Because again, what this is going to do is now set the text on the widget in the size box, all that stuff we just set up, it's going to set it to whatever we set this box or this object to be. And in the set, it's going to go into the open of the gate. The disable input will go into the close of the gate, or just the end overlap will go and close. And enter wants to be our interaction key. So for me, that's going to be the E keyboard event, like so. You can obviously set up an action mapping or have it set up any way you want. But for me, and the purpose of this tutorial, the E keyboard event is going to work fine. Then out of exit of the gate, this is where we want to actually interact with this object. So what I'm going to do to give us the illusion of picking it up is I'm going to get all of the components in here that I have. So the box and the cube will work for me. And then out of this, I'm going to get a destroy component. Now I'm doing destroy component and not destroy actor because I still want the actor to be in the world so I can still control the widget from this actor. So just to give us the illusion, I'm going to destroy the components so the player isn't aware that it's here and the collision is gone and all that good stuff as well. So once you've destroyed those, we want to add the widget onto the screen. So we come out the return value of the create widget again and add to viewport, which is again going to put the widget on screen. And because we've already set the text, the text should be on the widget perfectly already by the time we've added it onto the screen like so. I'm just going to double click these lines to get some rewrite nodes to keep it looking nice and organized. And then after this, I'm going to hold on D left click to get a delay. And this delay is how long the widget is going to be on screen for. So I'm going to set it to three seconds. You can set it to whatever you like. At the start of the video in the overview, I had it as two seconds. So again, just do this however you want for how long or how short you want it to be on screen for. And then the completed of the delay, I'm going to come out of this blue line again for the return value of the create widget. I'm going to get a remove from parent like so. And what that's going to do is that is going to then take it back off the screen again. So three seconds after we've added it onto the screen, we're going to remove it from the screen. And then after we remove it from the screen, we also want to get a destroy actor, which is then just going to remove the whole object from the world and from the game. Again, just helping to keep the game nice and efficient and running smoothly. And this is the code done. So what we've got is we've got it so we can pick it up so we can interact with it. And when we do pick it up, it's going to set the text on the widget where first it's going to create the widget, then set that text to what we want it to be dependent on the object that we are picking up and then add it on screen, three seconds later, remove it from the screen. So you can compile, save this, and we can close it as well. And what I'm going to do is we'll delete these and I'm going to drag in the blueprint actor we have now for the object. So drag it in and you can see that under the default here, we have interaction text, which is that variable we made earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write something in here like this is the default cube like so. So now when we pick that up, it should say this is the default cube. I'm going to add in another one here. And in this, I'm just going to spam a load of random letters. And this is just so that we can see if the size box is working and the text is wrapping how we want it to be. I'm going to get another random one in here just saying 
testing, testing, one, two, three. So now if we hit play, let's test this out. So we go over to this cube, we pick it up, that worked, and it says this is the default cube, working perfectly like so, and it removed it from the screen as well. If we go over here, it has all those random letters, and as you can see, it is sized to the screen perfectly as well. And then this one, it just says testing, testing, one, two, three. So as you can see, this is working how we wanted it to. When we pick it up, the text will come on screen and it will go off as well, and it will work perfectly dependent on which object we picked up. It will say something different, and the text will wrap to the screen, fitting it how we want as well. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we wanted to do. As I've just went over, we can pick up an object and it will come up on screen with some text dependent on the object we've picked up, changing each time, and the text will wrap to fit perfectly on the screen as well, dependent on where we want it and how big we want it to be. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.